Hi, my name is Evgeny, and you are about to watch me teaching grade three math at Albion Bilingual School, September 26, 2017. I'm going to start my class with getting students' attention first. Uh, attention getter, like one, two, three eyes on me. Students say one, two eyes on you. Then I put the problem on the board, and what I'm doing right now, I'm using a random selector to choose a student to read the problem to the entire class. So I usually, uh, when I peek from the whole class, I try to use the random generator just to make it unexpected for the students and keep them on their toes all the time. I try to list it as much as possible when I present a new topic or idea. My concept is don't tell them anything. <laughs> I don't take it to the extreme, but I try to elicit as much as I can because I believe that students know probably 70% of what's uh, well of the new topic because it tends to build on it on one another. Um, I'm asking another student, um, but then she decided to pass. In our school, we use tribe system, and each student can pass if they don't know the answer. So I'm trying to elicit. What the problem is about, I try to model expert thinking. Things like I'm looking at these numbers and I'm thinking, should I add, should I subtract? How can I compare them? So I'm gonna give them another 20 seconds to think about the possible answer, because I see that uh, many students want to answer this question and some of the students haven't thought about the problem yet. So I decided it's just on the spur of the moment to give them some more time. Now here, I see a student is actually paying no attention to what is happening, so I redirected him here a little bit. So I'm again looking for a quiet hand, I'm trying to regroup everyone, and then encourage them to share their answers to their neighbors. So it's kind of a like think, pair, share. So I'm asking a computer manager and you can see a student right there to help me out and pick a student who will share their work with the class. So we first it's a think, then pair, then share. So in this topic, we talk about comparing numbers and what she's trying to do is to place value. So I try to delegate as much as I can. In ideal lesson, I will not be doing anything, just, you know, directing some, giving some directions to the students. So at, right now you see that she moved the counter. That's my um, classroom management system right there with four colors, four teams. They move tokens, get points, then can get to spend them at the end of the week at the auction. So I have another student, again, randomly chosen from the class to go up to the board and share her answer, which she um, had previously discussed with her neighbor. Now I'm getting some feedback from the class here by putting their thumbs up or down, try to involve everyone. So I'm asking them, do you think guys, this is a correct answer or not correct? And then I clarify, because some students said the answer is not correct. Now just to clarify further, based on students' answers, I ask my computer manager to set up the timer this time. This is the first day as a computer manager. So he sets up the timer for 10 seconds for students to answer the final question. There's a small line at the bottom. Now the random generator is going to pick student. And the student is going, they basically know what to do. If they see their, the name, they come up to the board almost instantaneously. Here we go, there's a dab at the end of the answer. Here you go. A little dance from Molly, going, doing well. Now redirection a little bit happening over here and there. So again, I listed uh, from the students what they think about the answer, if it's a correct answer or not. So all of them get to um, raise their hands and here we go. So all of them said, yes, yeah, correct answer. I put a red tick and I ask happy manager this time, Dima, to move the green team counter up because the, the student, both students who gave me answers were from green team. So I'm gonna see how well they incorporated the content that I'm trying to teach, how well they will be able to compare two numbers. So I ask my um, 
supply managers to hand around whiteboards. And here we are. As this is one of the first days when we are using whiteboards. So I just want to make sure that students are familiar with the format, it's how they record answers. So here I decided to model. Even though it should take less time than it um, took during the lesson, so I decided to model the um, their workflow, of what my expectations are. So demonstrate with the whiteboard um, how I expect them to write the answers, and again elicit some responses from the students and record the answer on the whiteboard. Now here uh, we see an example of students working by themselves now without my interference. So they work on the individual whiteboards. You know, some of them have finished their twisting, turning their whiteboards. Some of them need my help, so I'm trying to clarify on the fly. Some of them have questions already. So I try to clarify what is happening, what's going on there. So while I'm doing that, I'm actually collecting data as to which student um, go, will go to the expert table. Basically, those students get the concept, they solve the problem, they don't ask questions, they add answers accurate, they're basically on top of the game. And I know that down the lesson I have planned some activities and they will not be interested. So I send them to the expert table. I prepared an enrichment worksheet for them which relates to the topic. And as you see, um, I have here, I have, this is the same class. I have fewer students, some of the seats are empty. And here I'm using the finger, five finger summative of assessment. So this is kind of a self-reflection for the students, even though I already know which students are going to be uh, pulled for a small group in front of the class. I ask them to look at the board and then show me their fingers. So think about themselves. So three fingers, meaning I got the concept or I'm in the middle. Uh, four fingers means I have a good understanding. Uh, five fingers mean I got the concept, I have mastery. And one or two means I'd be a bit lost. So, and I'm telling them, think about yourself and then look at those fingers and try to think. Uh, where are you? Are you number one, two, or three? If you are one, two, three, please come to the front of the classroom. But I, don't, I already know just um, approximately how many and who will come to the front of the classroom. And if they are above three, if they have a good understanding or if they have mastery, so they can work by themselves on a practice page. Whereas those students who are collecting and the front of the classroom They'll be working with me on a reteach to build understanding worksheet. I broke down the class into the three um, groups. Uh, together with me, there are about five, I think, about five students who need direct remedial work. They need direct intervention from me. They need me right there, right now. So I'm doing reteach to build understanding worksheet with them. I'm trying to clarify again. Well, how do we compare numbers? And I just see right now the student, um, he started, he thought he he had a good understanding, but then he just transitioned from the good understanding to, he started doing the extra by himself, but then he decided that, oh, I need some help. Now, we have some students who work by themselves, by themselves. Uh, they are at their desks, uh, some of them collaborate, some of them try to help each other, there's nothing wrong with that as long as they don't copy the answers. And then at the back of the classroom, unfortunately, we don't see this group, which I call an expert table. Those students, they do not need my help at all. Um, they basically work on an enrichment worksheet, which are um, tap into higher order thinking. They're trying to solve some complex problems that involve new content as well as content taught in previous lessons. So there's something interesting for them, something to challenge them and they don't bother me. Because if I had assigned a practice sheet to them, they would have been back to me in like a minute. 
like teach time finished, what do I do? What do I do? And I will have to cater to their needs, whereas I have students who are falling behind. This is where I should be right now. Uh, it's more targeted them and their focus is there as well. And I can see a student here, he actually transitioned back to, this, to his seat because, well, he understood he got it. So he doesn't need me any longer. He can go back and start working on practice sheet independently. And there's one student here, so he completed practice sheet. I had a look at the practice sheet and sent him to the expert table. So he grabbed his enrichment worksheet and um, got back. So I have another student and he also completed the practice sheet, independent practice sheet. And I'm having a conversation, I'm trying to gauge where he is and I spotted that he skipped a few problems. So I'm trying to collect their work, see where they are. And here I ask this, I ask them the self-reflection question again. I'm trying to, I try to get them to think about the um, five fingers again. So I try to redirect them to the screen and asking them, where do you think you are now? Do you think you have one finger, a vague idea? Or no idea or you're in the middle or do you have five fingers and some of the students showed five fingers so they thought that well actually I reached mastery high five you have mastery good job you so you came here with like zero or vague idea and now you have mastery so this is the whole purpose of the differentiation that took place here so those students in the middle they didn't need my, need my help they could just need time they just need time to process all those things. If they have questions, they can always join the group. Expert table, they, those guys are uh, doing some challenging tasks and those are um, on the low end. They just need a bit more time. And now they got it as well. So I'm just trying to tell them to go back to the seats. They completed their um, worksheets, their practice uh, notebooks, so I'm collecting them putting them behind me and just going around the class collecting the other works and we have some expert uh, table students who completed their work as well so by this time actually it's not showing on the board but actually what's going to happen and unfortunately my camera did not record it ran out of battery um, at the end of the class I went over some common mistakes and had an exit ticket so they're still on my desk today and my next class when I try to review I will have groups of students if there are still some students who didn't get concept which I'll be will be able to gauge um, on the basis of the exit ticket they will be in one group and I'll probably we teach them again if not we will move forward now to answer some of the reflection questions um, which is a good practice to do at the end of the class um, so I came up with five questions that I think uh, will help me understand whether my class has been successful or not so question number one did students meet the objectives of the lesson I think by and large they have um, I've seen from the formative assessment from the whiteboards that I have well about 80% of the students who got it so they were able to work by themselves. Some students exceeded my expectations. They were sent to the expert table to do some other things. Um, there were some students who need some more help and I think I delivered this help to them in a professional and effective manner. In front of the classroom, more individualized, more concentrated. All right, question number two, were students engaged? Um, I think there were. At uh, any part of the lesson, there were a few students um, here and there who were distracted, but I try to redirect them as much as I can. There are some times where I didn't notice them, but for the most part, I think students were engaged and were able to connect to the content. Now, the second question is, what part of the activities were the students most productively engaged? I think throughout the class, students um, were mentally and physically engaged into my lesson they were thinking uh, the random name generator kept them on their toes because at any point they could have been asked or nominated to give the answer 
Then during the whiteboard, the small individualized whiteboards that had to work to show the product. And then finally during the individual work, um, all of them work at their level and none of them were bored. Some of them, none of them were frustrated. I think, I think by and large, the lesson went pretty well and everybody was engaged. Next, what concepts and information did um, I have to clarify? Well, I have to clarify big ideas, actually, um, to the students in the front of the classroom. I had to sit down with them and actually just reiterate one more time, how do we compare numbers? Uh, how do we place value? And what do we do if the place value in hundreds is the same, for example? Do we move to tens or ones? Basically, the big, big ideas that I have to clarify. Uh, next question, do I need to reteach or further modify for some of all or all learners. I think it was clear that it's not necessary to modify for all learners. Maybe there might be some students who didn't get some uh, details. For example, they got the concept, they got the concept how to compare numbers, but then they know which number is greater, but they just they don't know how to write the lesser or greater symbol, which is new for them. Maybe I need to clarify that a little bit, but I think the big idea, the main objective of the lesson has been met. Now finally, uh, what would I do differently the next time I teach this lesson? Um, I think I would spend less time on clarification stage at the beginning of the class. And it's funny enough, I always come to this conclusion at the end of practically every lesson that I should clarify less. The sooner students get to practice, the better. It's not clear from the class, from the recording, because I have to edit, uh, I have to cut out some parts, but the clarification stage took some time. And at some point, I think I might have lost a student or two. So going forward, I think it's better to cut clarification stage um, I would say about 30%. The sooner the students get to practice, the better. The sooner they get their, their hands dirty, the better. But it's so hard to resist the temptation of clarifying because we think the, the more we clarify, the more students will get the concept. But ironically, it's the opposite. The more we clarify, the more bored the students will become, the more distracted, the more uh, disinterested and so forth. So clarify for just a little bit, concise and clear clarification, then move to differentiated instructions and then, um, sorry, move to um, conformity assessment and differentiated instructions. Right. So, um, so I think it's, that's it for this time. Unfortunately, again, I'm sorry, my battery died uh, by the end of the class. Uh, the, the, the exit ticket is not there, but believe me, it is there. <laughs> I try to finish my all my lessons with exit ticket to be able to modify and format it uh, in the future. All right, thanks for watching. Bye bye.